So the Tesla Model 3 battery has finally hit the DIY community. Yesterday, the team over at EVTV, Jack Rickard and them, they're my biggest fans, they've actually got their hands on a Model 3 car with this battery and they tore it down on camera. Of course, if you know anything about Jack Rickard, his videos tend to be three, four hours long and they tend to run on the long-winded side of things. And so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to edit down the interesting parts and see if we actually learn anything new about the Model 3 battery. So let's get into it. Play the video. All right, according to Jack here, it says that this battery is 80.5 kilowatt hour pack and right. And the reason he comes to those conclusions because he says that it's a 96 S battery pack, just like the Model S. The battery consists of four modules. They're not identical. One module has 23 cell groups. The other one has 25 cell groups. Then the next one has 23 and the next one has 25. So basically two of the modules are 23 cells in series and the other two are 25 cells in series. In each one of those uh, cell groups is 46 cells in parallel. These are of course the 2170 cells that we think are about five amp hour each or those were the rumor to be uh, around five or a little bit over five amp hours in capacity that means that the entire battery is 4416 cells uh, the whole thing weighs uh, 1054 pounds or 278 kilograms which would put this battery packs energy density at around 168 watt hours per kilogram uh, that is pretty good. Not exactly the 220 that I think on paper is that of the Model S, but of course, uh, as Jack mentions in there and as we find out at EV West, uh, yeah, you never really get the, the full 85 kilowatt hour capacity on the, on the Model S batteries, right? Far, it should be a lot better, but according to him, those are the numbers that he gives us there. I haven't, I actually haven't run the math to see if that equals out, but if it's wrong, do make sure and let me know in the comments there. And among the interesting parts are, of course, that the, all the modules have a circuit, it's like a ribbon, ribbon type circuit board that goes uh, across on top of it, and so that's how they're connecting to the BMS boards. The BMS boards, they're sub boards, right? Each one of these modules has one board that handles the entire module. And then those sub boards are connecting to the main board. And the way they're doing it some, some, in some serial way as there's only two pins connecting those sub boards into the main board. And that's different than the Model S. Uh, that's something new and quite clever. So each one of these modules is about 20 kilowatt hours, right? Per module, about 90 volts uh, nominal. So they, they could potentially be used as a standalone 20 uh, kilowatt hour, you know, power wall, right? Uh, but, but because we have not seen just how all the covering of these modules is, then we don't really know we have access to actually get to the terminals of each cell group. In order to use this module as is, you'd have to figure out the BMS board in there, know the communication uh, protocols and stuff, which is what Jack wants to do so that he can use them straight, just like that, you know, take out the module or the entire battery pack and put it in the wall, as he has been able to do with the Model S battery. Uh, Jack seems to be very, very optimistic and really, really likes this battery. He has call, even calls it the best battery ever built uh, up to date, right? And part of the reason why he says that is because there are going to be about half a million of these batteries being manufactured by Elon Musk and his team at Tesla in the next one to one and a half years, right? And that's of course to meet the half a million, you know, pre-orders that are have been placed already, right? So those cars are practically sold. And so they have to just, you know, be able to stay on task and be able to manage the 
production so that they can meet that demand, right? And so, which means that a lot of those are going to end up, as Jack says, wrapped around a tree. And that uh, is good news for us, the DIY community, because that means that they are going to become available. And so we're gonna be able to buy those batteries off of the, out of the car dismantlers uh, market, right? So a lot of these guys still don't know what they, what batteries are and how to use them. So they're still kind of selling them kind of cheap. In the case of uh, Model S, as you know, they are kind of limited because it took, I don't know, five, six years to get to around 200,000 uh, units out in the streets, right? And a lot of those are in other markets outside of the United States, right? So they are kind of scarce. Those battery packs, everybody wants them. All the RV people want them. All the guys that are doing conversions like us and EV West and stuff, we're snatching up all those batteries. So those modules are in high demand. And so it has kept the, the price of those modules quite high around, you know, $1,300 to $1,500 per uh, module. With the Model 3, it's going to be different because there are going to be a lot of those. Every week, there's going to be 5,000 new cars on the road, which means that there's going to be a, almost a not never-ending supply of those, right? If it's uh, successful, which all the data that's coming in seems to point to, to, to being a very successful car, then yeah, they're just every week, there's going to be more and more of those cars uh, being produced which means there are more and more of those cars that are gonna end up being in some kind of accident or in some flood or in some event that would put them out of commission and it would make the battery cells available to us. So the quicker that uh, people like Jack and his team figure out all the, you know, BMS stuff, you know, or even if they don't, we could just strip all that stuff out and then put our own systems with our Batrium BMS systems and now uh, EV West has the new a BMS system that they are starting to use in their builds, then uh, we're gonna be able to use some of those batteries. It's only a matter of time before we start messing around with those. And I can come to you with a video doing a DIY power wall using Model 3 batteries, right? As of right now, you know, the millionaire or ex-millionaire, I don't know, uh, was the only one that has that car, is the one that's able to buy that car. I don't know the details, I don't know how much you pay for it. You probably overpaid because it's the first one. It's really early in the game. And so that's pretty cool to see. So this is just a quick update on where we are with the Model 3 batteries. The first one's hit the DIY uh, shops and it's in a bench. Someone is actually tearing it apart. I wish the EVTV team over there a lot of success figuring all that stuff out. And then the future will be very bright with uh, more and more uh, inexpensive lithium batteries for all our projects. All right, guys. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Oh, oh God. Yeah, set it off. Yeah. Yeah. No, set it off on your table and then come help me. Yeah. Okay. okay, here it goes. Ooh. Come help me. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. A little hernia thing, get checked out. But <laughs> I'm okay. Get, get off my ass. I'll be fine. Saddened to report that in the process, they run over Shop Kitty's foot. And uh, Bill took her to the, vi the vet. I'm not sure who was wounded more seriously, a Bill Psyche or Shop Cat's uh, rear leg. Little leads. Yeah, the little wires. Yeah, the little wires. Yeah, the little wires.